Today we're looking at the Raspberry Pi 2B, the latest version of the microcomputer. It comes standard with four USB ports, a network port, a HDMI port, as well as a media port. It has a micro SD slot that is used to put the operating system on. First thing you'll need to do is format the memory card. Go to sdcard.org and download their formatting tool for either Windows or Mac, depending on your computer's operating system. Save the file somewhere on your hard disk. Once the file is downloaded, run the setup program. Accept the defaults. I'm using a micro SD adapter because my USB card reader can only read SD cards. Install the USB card reader in your computer and then run SD Formatter. Click the Options button and select Format Size Adjustment to On. Now click the Format button and click OK to the warning message. The SD card will now be formatted. When the format is finished, just press Exit. Go to raspberrypi.org and click on the Download tab. Download the Noobs or new out-of-box software. Select either Torrent or download the zip file. Save the file on your computer, then extract all of the files to your hard disk. Enter the folder that was created and copy all the files within that folder. Now go to the micro SD card and paste those files into the root directory. This will take a little while, I've sped it up for you. Once all the files are copied, eject the card reader. Take the micro SD card and insert it into the Raspberry Pi 2B. I've got a standard black case that I'm using to house the Raspberry Pi. Once the case has been fitted, connect the network cable, the HDMI cable to the screen and last of all, connect the power cable. I'm just using my phone charger to power up the Raspberry Pi 2B. Straight away, the unit starts to boot. We get presented with an installation menu. I'm gonna click the recommended option, the Raspbian, which is a version of the Debian operating system. I'm also going to select the language to English, US. Click the install button and answer yes to the confirmation window that appears. The Raspberry Pi operating system is installing. This will take quite a while and I've sped it up once again so that you're not bored. When the operating system is fully installed, just click OK. As the Raspberry Pi boots up, you get to see a lot of white text fly past on a black screen. Pretty boring. You'll see this every time that the Raspberry Pi boots up. When the screen background changes to blue, you've just entered a configuration tool. Using the arrow keys, move the red selection bar down to option 3. Enable boot to desktop. Press the enter key. Using the arrow key, move the red selection bar down to the second option. Desktop login as user Pi. Press the enter key. Press the tab key twice to navigate to the finish button and press enter. Press enter to reboot. Once again you get to see a lot of white text fly by on a black background as it boots. Once we see the desktop we want to navigate to the top left hand side. Click on the icon that looks like a black computer screen. This is called Alex Terminal. From the Edit menu, click on Preferences. First thing I want to do is increase the terminal font size. Click on the number 10 and scroll down to reveal larger font sizes. I'm going to select font size 14. Click OK twice to exit the Preference menu. I need to find the IP address of this Raspberry Pi. Type in ifconfig. We're looking for the keywords INET address. My address is 192.168.1.68. This is my internal private network. 
I also need to know what my gateway is. Use the netstat minus r command to show the routing table. Take note of the gateway address. It could be a name as shown here, bigpond.bigpond, big or it could be an IP address. On my desktop PC, I'm going to browse to my gateway router. Yours may look slightly different. Click the home network, then devices. Scroll down till I find the Raspberry Pi and click on that. Click configure and tick the box. Always use the same IP address. Click apply. This will ensure the Raspberry Pi always has the same IP address. Go to putty.org and download the putty application. Once the download's finished, run the PuTTY application. Enter in the IP address for the Raspberry Pi 192.168.1.68. I'm going to save this so I don't have to type it in all the time, and I'll call it Raspberry Pi. Click Save. Now just double click the Raspberry Pi to open up a Telnet session. Login is Pi, and the password is Raspberry. First thing we need to do is change the password. Type in the command PASSWD. You'll be asked to enter in the current Unix password, which is Raspberry, and I'm going to enter in top secret. Confirm the new password by retyping it in. Once again, I want to increase the font size. If you click in the top left hand corner on the icon of two computers, select change settings. Under window, click on appearance. Under font settings, click the change button. I'm going to increase the font size to 14. Click apply. First thing we want to do is update the operating system, but we have to be a super user to do that. Type in the command sudo, which means super user do, then the word apt minus get update and press enter. This will make the system check for any updates that have been made since the noob zip file was created. Once all the updates have been downloaded, we need to install them. Type in sudo apt-get upgrade and press enter. Type y and press return. The system will go off and install the updates. To enable remote desktop control of the Raspberry Pi, we want to install type VNC server. Type in sudo apt-get install type VNC server. Type y, enter. For a password, I'm going to use secret. Verify the password by typing secret in again. Type n return. Create a startup script by typing sudo nano forward slash etc forward slash init.d forward slash type vnc server. Paste the startup script into the file. Press Ctrl X and type Y to save the file. Type sudo chmod 755 forward slash etc forward slash init.d forward slash type vnc server to make the startup script executable. Type sudo update minus rc.d type vnc server defaults to update the settings. Type in sudo reboot to reboot the Raspberry Pi so the initialization script is run at boot. Log back into the Raspberry Pi. Type in sudo apt-get install auto cut cell. This will add the ability to cut and paste in between the remote desktop and your PC. Type in sudo nano forward slash home forward slash pi forward slash dot vnc forward slash x startup. Add the command auto cut cell minus fork. Press control x and then type y to save the file. Once again type the command sudo reboot. You can scroll through past commands by using the up and down arrows. Go to realvnc.com and download the VNC Viewer software for your OS. Here I'm going to download the Windows 64-bit version. Fill in your details and download the file. Double click and run the software. Type in the IP address for the Raspberry Pi, followed by the full colon, 
then 5901. Press connect. Type in the password, which is secret. Click on Alex Terminal and then go to the Edit menu and select Preferences. Click on the Terminal font and increase the font size to 14. Click OK twice to exit. Type in sudo nano forward slash etc forward slash init.d forward slash type bnc server. Move down the file and add the following comments. Minus geometry. I want a screen resolution of 800 by 600 pixels. Then type minus depth 24 for 24 bit color. Press Ctrl X and enter Y to save the file. Enter the command sudo reboot. When we log back into the VNC viewer desktop, you'll notice that the screen is not as long as it was before. Type in sudo shutdown now or from the menu select shutdown and click OK. Turn the power off to the Raspberry Pi and remove the micro SD card. It's time to back up our system. Run Win32 Disk Imager. Browse to a location where you want to save the backup file and type in the name of the backup file. It's a good idea to have multiple backups at different points. So if you do something wrong, you can restore the backup just before you made that mistake. Make sure you click the read button. It'll take a while to back up the micro SD card. Click OK when finished. Put the micro SD card back in the Raspberry Pi and power it up. Type in sudo apt-get install ntfs-3g. This will install NTFS file support. Put a USB stick in your computer and create a folder on it. I'm creating SanDisk USB stick. Eject the USB stick out of the PC and plug it into the Raspberry Pi. You'll be notified that removable media has just been inserted. Click OK. We can see the folder we created previously. Open Alex Terminal and type in the command ls forward slash media to show the files in the directory media. The big ugly number is our USB stick. We can also type ls space minus l space forward slash dev forward slash disk forward slash by minus uuid. This shows the ugly number also. Copy that number to the clipboard. Type in the command sudo make dir space forward slash media forward slash USB stick. Then type in the command sudo chmod 770 forward slash media forward slash USB stick. Then the command sudo chown minus r pi full colon users forward slash media forward slash USB stick. Paste in the following command to mount the USB stick. Take note, if you're not using an NTFS formatted USB stick, the command line will be slightly different. To unmount the USB stick, type in the command sudo umount forward slash dev forward slash sda1. We can remount that. Type in ls forward slash media forward slash USB stick. We can see the folder that we created on the USB stick when it was in the PC. This means that the USB stick has been properly mounted. Type in sudo cp forward slash etc forward slash fs tab forward slash etc forward slash fs tab dot backup. Then type sudo nano forward slash etc forward slash fs tab. Paste in the following information so the USB stick is mounted every time the Raspberry Pi boots up. Press Ctrl X, type Y to save the file. Type in sudo reboot. Log back in and use the file manager to check that the USB stick has been mounted correctly. Under the media file, we notice a problem. We've still got the ugly number, plus we've got the folder that's called USB stick. This means the USB stick hasn't been mounted properly to that folder. Type in sudo nano forward slash etc forward slash fs tab. We see a mistake in this file. There's a space after the equal sign. Remove the space, press Ctrl X, type Y to save the file. Then reboot the Raspberry Pi again. Log back in and use the file manager once again to make sure the USB stick has been mounted properly. This time, everything's all right. I'm using a D-Link USB hub to power the Raspberry Pi and the external hard disk. This unit has five USB ports as well as two additional charging ports. 
The Raspberry Pi by itself doesn't have enough power to spin up the external hard disk. Plug the power into the USB hub, then plug the square USB cable in, and plug the other end into the Raspberry Pi. Plug a USB cable into the hub, and the other end to power the Raspberry Pi. Finally, plug the USB hard disk into the hub. Type in sudo nano forward slash etc forward slash fs tab. Like before, add the details for the USB hard disk. Create the folder to mount the USB hard drive to. Use the chmod and chown commands as previously. Then type in sudo reboot. Log back into the Raspberry Pi and fire up the file explorer. Check to make sure the USB hard drive has been properly mounted under the USB HDD folder. Type in sudo apt-get install samba samba-common-bin. Type in sudo user add nas user minus m minus capital G users. Type in sudo paswd nas user to set the password. Type in secret then re-enter secret. Type in sudo smb paswd space minus a nas user. Type in secret then retype secret. Type in sudo cp forward slash etc forward slash samba forward slash smb.conf forward slash etc forward slash samba forward slash smb.conf.hold then type in sudo nano forward slash etc forward slash samba forward slash smb.com. Press Ctrl W to search for the word security. Remove the hash from in front of the word security equals user. Scroll down to the bottom of the file, then paste in the following text. This is where we'll define what folders we'll share over the SMB network. I'm sharing the USB stick and the USB hard drive. Also paste in the NAS user details. Press Ctrl X, type Y to save the file. From your PC, browse the network to the Raspberry Pi. You should see the two folders that I shared. The first time you try to access these files, you have to enter your username and password. Username is NAS user and the password is secret. Click on remember my credentials so you don't have to type this in again. Browse inside and you should be able to see all the files. Test that you've got right access by creating a new folder. When we delete the folder, we confirm that we've got full access. 